when you identify an evangelist, so I, I'm now thinking not just someone that comes on, but there are several steps up the ladder. Let's say they shout the loudest, or more importantly, they're almost like a team leader. Because if they're an evangelist, they're probably touching or connecting with more people than the people that are down the pyramid. Maybe just getting out of the funnel, you're nurturing them, they're coming up, they're using the tools or the, or the, or the services. What do you do to not only empower an evangelist, but make sure that they don't become um, a super fan that's necessary directing something that's away from the mission? You, I always think back to these polarities. You want everyone to have an equal voice. You want everyone to be able to participate. And we've struggled in the past, I won't name what venture, where we've created great super fans and some not so great super fans along the journey. And so it's a question of how do you empower them in the right way? Again, we had some thoughts, but I'd love to hear what you, how you treat evangelists. Like, how do you treat these people that are uh, the prophets of your, um, not necessarily the Messiah, but the prof prophets of your community? So I like to look at it as a ladder of leadership and ultimately starting from the first day somebody enters into a community, giving them these opportunities to kind of rise up the ladder should they self-identify that they want to and they want to become more engaged. And at each stage of that ladder of leadership, presenting them with um, opportunities to become more involved and also equipping them with the knowledge they need to remain aligned with the vision and the mission of the brand or the business. Now, important to note that just as someone can go up that ladder of leadership and become more and more passionate uh, and, and become a bigger evangelist, should they drop off, should they take a, a leap off of the ladder, they go further than the bottom rung. Um, and that's what you're, that's what you're kind of uh, alluding to is sort of the, the delicate balance between a super fan and almost, or a super um, fan and a super detractor, which can also almost follow if not nurtured correctly, if not, um, you know, yeah, kind of, kind of remaining a part of that organization going forward. I've done this both in person and online. So, you know, we have a, a group of 77,000 entrepreneurs and small business owners that are led by a moderation team that is extraordinary. They have raised their hand not only to be content creators and contributors, but ultimately to lead um, the online Facebook group. And also in person, we have over 400 small groups that meet every month around the world. Uh, and those are led by grassroots leaders, that um, leaders and co-leaders, as well as individual chair positions. We built structures for that. But every one of those leaders, those evangelists, those folks on the ground that are referring and sharing about the community and bringing more people in, they all start as a member. They all start as someone that first becomes aware of the brand, then connects more deeply to the brand, then you know becomes a contributor, whether it's locally or online, then raises their hand to get more involved. Um, so I, I think it really comes back to identifying those sort of trigger points when somebody moves from one stage to another, from being you know a member to a contributor of content, from a contributor of content to raising their hand to maybe be a moderator or lead or um, you know get more involved in whatever capacity your business brand or organization allows. Actually charting that out strategically and categorizing where people fall within that life cycle and that trajectory. That's why I talk about nurturing after acquisition and actually tracking data to better understand even within your pool of evangelists. This is something that we do a lot when we look at referrals, product referrals um, at large for any kind of brand or business is better understanding the personas of those evangelists. They're not all going to be the same. Some are going to want to rally people around a film festival in a courtyard, even in a global pandemic to watch um, one of their favorite films. Some of them are gonna wanna write critiques and create online content and produce some type of written um, you know, accompaniment to whatever you're creating. Some are, there are different places where they can evangelize and get involved. The introverts will go tell all their friends and family um, in their WhatsApp group, you know, but maybe won't be the ones on Instagram Live shouting it out to thousands. All of them are incredibly valuable. It's important to understand, to nurture those relationships and to look at each evangelist as an individual or at least in a grouping under a persona so that you can adequately support, um, nurture and, and grow those relationships for the long run. Thank <laughs> you.